Once you have looked at reasoning, in particular the inductive versus the deductive reasoning, uh, the next thing you want to do is look and see how do you apply it to a piece of writing or how do you look at a piece of writing to identify whether you have inductive and deductive reasoning. Now, what I want to do is look at the Declaration of Independence. It's a fairly well-known document. It's available in a lot of different books uh, as well as widely on the internet. And so, uh, at least in theory, before you watched this video, you have read the Declaration of Independence. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our inductive reasoning. And remember that inductive reasoning is where you have a whole bunch of examples. And then once you take that big pile of examples, you draw a conclusion based on those examples. So what I want you to do now is pause the video and look through the declaration and look for where you find inductive reasoning. That is to say, where do you see a whole lot of examples that are going to prove a point? So find where there's a whole bunch of examples and then see if you can figure out what point is being proved by those examples. Okay, that should have been pretty easy. Uh, if you look at the Declaration of Independence, depending on how the typesetting has worked in a given book or website, uh, you've got basically 33 paragraphs of examples. So there are lots and lots of examples. One of the things you can also look at, not just the quantity of the examples, is the quality of them. Uh, Jefferson works to get a strong emotional appeal. And so what he does with these examples, if you look and see, he has very powerful language, very emotionally charged languages. So we have all of the examples of the things that King George does. We have, he has refused his assent to the laws. He has forbidden the government. Um, he has called together. He has dissolved uh, representative houses. So we have these, they're action verbs, which automatically makes them strong. And these particular verbs that he uses are also very emotionally charged. So he's got a lot of powerful emotional appeal as well. So. What we want to do then is figure out, he's got all these wonderful examples, and figure out what these examples go to prove. What's his main point that he reaches by the time he get done, get, gets done with all those examples? And basically, what he comes up with, if we translate it into modern English, uh, we're looking at something like King George is a tyrant. who is taking away people's rights. So that is our conclusion that we reach from the inductive reasoning. Now, the next part is a little bit trickier. We now want to figure out where has Jefferson put deductive reasoning in. So we're looking now for that solid logical structure of a syllogism, where we're going to have a major premise, which is a big general principle that Jefferson will be working from. We're going to look for a minor premise, which is going to be a specific situation that we're going to apply to that major premise. And then we're going to look for a therefore, which, as I mentioned earlier, in mathematical ease, those three dots stand for therefore. So look for a therefore and find what kind of conclusion Jefferson makes from those premises. So now I want you to pause the video for a little bit longer 
and search through the Declaration of Independence and see if you can find those components of the structure of a syllogism. Okay, that may have been a little bit trickier. Part of the reason is the uh, major premise and the minor premise are somewhat distant from each other. Um, so what we want to do then is look and see where we find those premises. And to start with the major premise, um, if we look at the second paragraph, that's the one that starts, we hold these truths to be self-evident. So now you know this is sort of a flag. We're coming up to a big idea here. And we actually have a chain of principles that lead from one to another. That all men are created equal, uh, that they are endowed with their creator with unalienable rights. Uh, among these rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's a famous phrase you hear a lot. Um, to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. That is to say, the purpose of government is to keep people's rights. Um, and then here's the big one. Uh, whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, that is to say, when the government starts to take away those rights, uh, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. That is to say, if a government is taking away people's rights, it's time to get rid of that government. So that's our major premise. Now, you may notice something about how I've put these two statements on my board. Uh, so if this is our major premise here from the deductive reasoning for our syllogism, then we have something, Jefferson's done something pretty clever here. The minor premise is something that you get to after you've done that inductive reasoning, which is to say he takes his inductive reasoning and the conclusion from the inductive reasoning is actually the minor premise for the deductive reasoning. So that's a pretty clever thing Jefferson, Jefferson's done here. So what we have now is we have the major premise, if a government is taking away people's rights, it's time to get rid of that government. Then we have our minor premise, our specific situation. King George is a tyrant who is taking away people's rights. And so if we add these two premises together, we get therefore, it's time to get rid of King George. And so that's basically uh, what the Declaration of Independence is about. It's this boils down to this syllogism. And this is what our nation is founded on. Um, this is the signing of this document is what we celebrate when we celebrate the 4th of July. It's not just about giving kids firecrackers and letting them blow their fingers off and things like that. Um, and it is historically relevant. Jefferson himself actually believed um, that we ought to have a good revolution every 60 years or so, that governments would get stale and automatically turn into uh, tyranny. Uh, so in this case, we've gone 240 years and haven't yet had to have another revolution. I think that's pretty good. But this is the basic premise that the United States was founded on. And by the way, something that happens, some groups will go to like shopping malls with this thing and wander around and say, hey, I've got this petition, do you want to sign it? And people will look at it and say, isn't this some sort of commie thing? No, this is the Declaration of Independence. This is what our country is based on. 